And it's a question of whether he's going to go to the inside of 130R. He's got the momentum that he's not far off being able to do that. Bags yourself, Gilzo, in the wall. I mean, I don't want to say it, but he kind of binned it. Welcome. This is round 11 of the Sprint Championship, just two rounds to go before we crown ourselves a new champ. Sam Sage is with me. Sam, how are you feeling about the race tonight? I am pumped for a bit of Suzuka. I think it's something like 5.8 kilometers of pure jam jarmac. Japanese tarmac is what I was <laughs> going to say, folks. Uh, the jarmac is a new thing. Uh, we love some jarmac. Uh, it could rain, it can have a safety car. If you've seen our previous races here, you know that it's always hectic. The drivers always struggle around here. The traction is off, the corners are tough. I think that, uh, I think it could be very, very exciting. It could be very exciting indeed. We have 13 drivers in the lobby today. Suzuka, one of the most difficult circuits, technically very tricky to get right. We're on board with Purple Petrol right now as he gets very close to the grass on his outlap. Uh, we've got the super soft, the soft and the medium tyres that are available for the drivers to use today. It should be a one-stop race regardless of if you start on the super soft or the soft. Uh, and it'll just be a case of when you come into the pits to put on the medium tyres. But as you've mentioned, Sam, it is a bit overcast, so don't be surprised to see some rain. Of course, we have a championship battle on our hands with two rounds to go. Suzuka, such a famous circuit for the championship showdowns that we've seen, featuring the likes of Mika Hakkinen and Michael Schumacher, Alain Prost and Ayrton Senna. And this one is Caesar and Bullet Boy. Caesar has a 16 point advantage over Bullet Boy with a couple of races to go. Bullet Boy won the race last time out in Britain to give himself a fighting chance. Uh, so yeah, if the gap is less than 25, the race goes, uh, sorry, the championship goes down to the final race. But if Caesar pulls out an advantage of over 25 points by the end of today, he will be crowned champion just a little while after winning season two. Purple Petrol, the first driver across the line, a 130.927. Yeah, I think he'll be looking to go again. It was a little scruffy in the first sector, but then again, that is exactly what we're expecting from a lot of people. Toxic Tomato runs a little wide going through the infamous 130R. What a call. We've had some eventful moves around there in the past as well. Uh, let's see what Toxic Tomato can do up against the reigning Purple Petrol. He goes a 130.18 tenths faster than McLaren, so the gap quite small actually um new toxic tomato usually sits towards the top of the grid the purple factory usually fills in the middle but hopefully boy wow that is a statement to be made 1.5 seconds faster than the toxic tomato that's a 128.5 yeah so now five times are on the board hopefully boy is still leading the way we did finally get the streak broken last time out when caesar became the first driver to claim two pole positions in the season uh, but the fact remains it is still very very close in the battle for poles each and every week and don't be surprised if we see that once again Johannes currently going down the back straight he's on the super soft tyre a tyre that not many have opted for early in this session yeah I wonder if Johannes knows some of the others don't in terms of weather maybe he thinks he can stretch those long enough but as Ben said at the start oh Ooh. we've lost the back end going through the last corner that's going to cost him some time and he only goes into third so Garner Man has popped into second place so I haven't noticed that actually so the top three separated by a tenth and a half yeah maybe Johannes would have been in and around pole if he didn't have that late spin Lopez he's going to cross the line and on the soft tyres he goes into P5 129.9 a stay on board with Caesar now. We had some inside information from Caesar. Says it's not going for pole position because it always goes wrong for him. He's on the medium tyre. That is the hardest compound tyre that we've got here this race weekend. So it'll be interesting to see where he nestles in to the grid on that compound of tyre. It's obviously a lot more difficult to set a fast paced lap on the harder compound tyre. It's meant for more race pace. But we always know the harder the compound tyre, the more dodgy it is. He's actually running on zero ERS as well. So it looks as though this lap is already gone and finished. 
So Ork does the good lap from the medium tyres to go into fifth. He's the leader of the medium guys at the moment. But Bullet Boy, um, what's happening here? He has, oh, he's missed the pit he's lane. He's changed his mind about finishing the lap and he is instead going to go into the pit lane. So no lap on the board yet from Bullet Boy who started P13 in Britain last time out and still managed to take victory. Here comes Lopez, currently sitting in sixth. That's pretty much exactly in the midfield. He is nine tenths up on his lap time, but... Oh, no, he's lost it! Oh, and he and just he's about... No, he does go into the wall. Lopez, sir, uh, you have binned it. Binned it, but he's not completely out of it. He's just put it in a recycling bin. He's all right for now. He's going to head back to the pit lane, and he will be back out on track this session. I reckon a pretty impressive save. Quite Bottas-esque, Bottas-esque from Canada. Yes, unbelievable save that was. Uh, but yeah, Lopez not out of the session. He is still in P6, but they'll need to do some work on his car. Caesar going very wide uh, as he goes into one of the corners in the second sector. The first Egna, I believe that was. So he is still relatively going for it. He's on three ERS. So um, yeah, not quite sure what Caesar's strategy is right now. But both of the guys who are in the championship hunt haven't set a lap. He has absolutely nailed the spoon curve. What a corner that is as well. So tricky to get right, but when you do, it flows brilliantly. He's on ERS4, which apparently is still the fastest ERS mode, despite there being a fifth one, of course. Going through 130R now. Oh, it's effortless from the uh, Ferrari driver. Not moving up into eighth gear. A lot of drivers do this now, so they can slow the car down faster, which is an interesting tactic. Let's see what he does going through the final corner now. He's coming up to the line. He's currently in seventh place. Where's he going to be now? He goes into third. He's less than a tenth away from pole. Yeah, Hapuli boy holding on to that pole position that he got very early in the session, but with seven and a half minutes to go, you'd imagine there'll still be plenty of action remaining in the field. Yes. Uh, Caesar, just over seven tenths ahead of his best time. So, well, he doesn't have a time on the board yet, but um, I guess that's compared to his invalidated lap that he did. Uh, and he's just got a last couple of corners to go. Corner 18 navigated successfully in P5, which on the medium tyres is a pretty good effort. Orcters is on a lap and he's just got a couple of corners to go and that looked a little scrappy as he went through the Casio triangle uh, and whether that's cost him or not remains to be seen. He does improve uh, but it's not enough to move him up any positions. We'll have to wait and see. He had a very nervous moment with Racer 555 last season if you remember going through 130R. A bit more comfortable this time out. Maynard did get a podium oh, here at Japan last year and he'll need a good time if he wants to give himself a good chance of doing so again. Uh, it's P7 on the super soft tyres though, so he'd maybe been expecting a little bit of a quicker lap. Yeah, a few minor mistakes there, definitely cost him a few tenths. I reckon he could definitely gain half a second if he put together a nice clean lap. Oh, yeah. it's a crash! Orcus is colliding with another car! Um, I think it's Gilzo. Yeah, Gilzo's been given a five place grid penalty, so... Gilzo currently only set to start P11, but he will go uh, to the back of the grid if he stays P11. His teammate Johannes is on a lap, and he'll be looking to cross the line on soft tyres right about now. And he goes into P2. He goes quicker than Ghana Man, so an improvement. The Force India currently set to start on the front row. Yeah, that is a great lap. Johannes retires. He's done and dusted there. Someone who will not set a lap time, though. Oh, Lopez drops into second place, two tenths away from pole. It's a great lap for the Ferrari driver. Bullet Boy, on the other hand, the man challenging Caesar for the championship win. Is Caesar going across the line. Now. Oh, Caesar goes into P4. That's a good lap from Caesar. What tyre was he on? He's on the, on the soft tyre. That's good to see from him. Uh, Bullet Boy, though, is on out lap. He will not make it to the line in time. He's on the super soft tyre. Um, he's going to start the back. Yeah, we saw Bullet Boy win from 13th in Britain. Uh, can he repeat it two, two in a row? Uh, no one's still able to touch a Pooley Boy who has a three temps advantage at the top. We know the guys from two down to four will not set another lap time. So it lies on the likes of Garnerman and Toxic Tomato. Can they push it up the field any more than they currently are. Hapuli Boy will not improve. He is retired from the session. Still got Toxic Tomato. He is on a lap and it looks as if he's just about going to make the line. He has left it very, very close indeed. Uh, but he has made it. We've got Mayner coming across the line now. He improves to P3. A big improvement from Mayner, which just leaves Toxic Tomato in that red Ferrari. Can he prize away pole position from Hapuli Boy? He will have to do it at the death. He goes around the final corner. And it's... No, he misses out by a couple of temps. 
and it wasn't validated anyway. So it will be Hapuli Boy who starts from pole. For the second time this season, it is the Williams of Hapuli Boy that leads the cars away on the formation lap. No, your eyes don't deceive you. That is a Williams out the front. Lopez is going to start on the front row with him, and then it's going to be Mayner starting in P3. All of those guys are starting on these super soft tyres. In a good position, though, is Johannes in P4. He's starting on the soft tyre, the same as Caesar in P5. He starts seven places higher than his championship rival. Garnerman starts P6 on the super softs, then it's Toxic Tomato in P7. DJ Marshall, a classic P8 in qualifying for him. Walters starts P9, and Purple Petrol rounds out the top 10. 11th is Janssen, 12th is Bullet Boy, who will have to come from outside the top 10 again. He did so and won in Britain last time out. Can he repeat the feat? And then Gilzo, who got a five-place penalty in qualifying for his collision with Walters. He will start 13th and last. An ultimate race of the sprint championship is going to start any second now as we build two five red lights. Hakuni Boy starts from pole and the Japanese Grand Prix and we are away. Lopez is on the left in the Ferrari and watch out from behind we've got Mena and Johannes who might try something into turn one it's a fairly good start from Hapuli boy Johannes is facing trouble from Caesar who's got a great start and Mena's dropping back out. positions there was yeah there's a contact further back that's Caesar who's gone Caesar down in P12 and the start of this race a race he could win the championship it has started in terrible fashion the top two have absolutely blasted away Garner Johannes is gone through. Johannes is gone so another car in the gravel. We've had a number of incidents on this first lap. Johannes and Caesar are the ones that have not paid off for them at all. Hapuli Boy and Lopez are laughing because they are running away with it. Sam, that was as hectic as we thought it might be. Yeah, I thought it was going to be mad. I was worried that Caesar, who was stuck in the midfield, was going to get caught up in something. And both Red Bulls speared into the gravel into turn one. Johannes got all out of shape where he was trying to make a move back on Garnerman, who's up three places to start this race. A great start for him onto the podium. Mainer, a little struggle for him in his downfall. But DJ Marshall, after finishing outside of the points, he's up three places into a top five so far. Bullet Boy, though, the biggest win, as you said. He's up into seventh place and trying to make the leaps and bounds to take taking this championship back for himself. Yeah, an absolutely crazy first lap. Only the top two really got away from it. And Caesar all the way down in P11. And we've seen it once again where Caesar started quite a few places ahead of Bullet Boy. But this time, after just one lap, he is four places further off. So not a great start for Caesar, who was involved in some sort of contact. I mean, you might have a better perspective than me. Lopez is out! And look at the carnage! DJ Marshall's gone! Mayner's out! What have we missed? I, I've been, missed all of it. Two cars in the wall. DJ Marshall turning around has also hit the wall. We are pretty much down to 10 runners. DJ Marshall's got a limp back. That almost should be a safety car. That was mental and we have missed it. I'm so... There's another car off. Gilzo's in the grass in turn one. Japan never fails to deliver the craziness that we all need. Yeah, it, it's such a such a weird one. Garnerman's taking advantage. Bullet Boy is now up to P4. It's taking him just one and a bit laps to make up eight places. Orcters and Purple Petrol there were momentarily battling it out. Uh, just, just absolute mayhem. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that one of the guys has got on board or something because I would love to see what ridiculousness went on there. Um, I can only imagine that Lopez, who was in front, who was behind Mainer went for maybe a dive and DJ Marshall got caught up in it. Maybe the other way round. I can't place any blame because we didn't see it, but that must have been what happened into that awkward right hand of the last corner. Purple Petra, though, sitting pretty. He's in sixth place. Bullet Boy, again, the biggest victory. And every person is up four places or more other than the Bullet Boy, who has walked away with the league so far. Johannes is putting a lot of pressure on Janssen over P7. He very nearly got past the spoon curve. Instead, will he try something on the inside of 130? Oh! No, oh, he has. He's gone a little wide in doing so, but he is through and into P7. Purple petrol. Bless him. Oh, he's he trying nearly to make goes it. Yeah. Bullet Boy does hit the grass and lock up a little bit. This is bringing Purple Petrol into play. And of course, the RS is open. Purple Petrol's getting it. Bullet Boy should also just get it. Yep. But Purple Petrol's got the better run out the final corner. He's going down the inside. They've got to stay clean. It's a drag race down there. They are neck and neck. Who's going to come out on top? 
Oh, but it goes wide. The purple petrol takes the place. And I think Johannes also steps through. So what was looking like a really good position for Bullet Boy has turned into somewhat of a disaster as he nearly loses it on the curbs uh, as he's going through the S's right now. He's down into P7 and he's not looking comfortable at all. No, he's not looking comfortable at all. You're very right. And Caesar just sets the fastest lap of the race. So he gets an extra point now. That's two for him. And he's actually not that far back from Bullet Boy. He's within a pit stop. Yeah, and Janssen runs a bit wide. He goes onto the gravel, picks up a time penalty, and that's brought Gilzo into the fold, who does go a little wide on Degna 2, but he's still on the back of Janssen, and he might try something into the hairpin. He's tucked right in behind and tried to get a better exit. A good strategy, and it seems to have worked pretty well. When is he going to strike? And Johannes very close to the back of the McLaren of Purple Petrol. And in turn, Bullet Boy is right behind Johannes. The three of them separated by about five temps. And you can see there's Bullet Boy going around the outside of Johannes. He must have had a poor exit, Johannes. And Bullet Boy has made up one of the positions that he lost. Can he make up two as he's building on Purple Petrol here? Purple Petrol got him in. Oh, oh God, there's a contact. Bullet Boy goes into the back of Purple Petrol. They have managed to keep it all going. And it looks as if Bullet Boy is now in P5. Yeah, oh, Johannes big... trying to move on Purple Petrol, and he's forced his way through. A little bit dodgy. Gilzo, his teammate, is also looking to take a piece of the snack there. That is Purple Petrol's McLaren. He's got a much better exit, as we saw the fight was going on. Can a move be made into Spoon Curve? A really tough place to get a move down on the game. No, Gilzo wants a little wide again there. The understeer kicking in. Purple Petrol struggling as well. Dirty Air may be playing a part, but let's see what the, DR, not the DRS, the ERS and Slipstream can do for the two behind your hangers now. The pretty boy also managing to pull out the gap a little bit. 1.2 seconds, 1.5 seconds. Oh, Purple Petrol clips the grass. That opens him up to a move. Gilzo goes down the inside, and that looks like Gilzo moves into P7. Well, oh, he went... contact. Oh, yeah, he went very late, actually. Uh, Purple Petrol is still there, and hey, he'll now get DRS, so Gilzo will still get it off Johannes, who is rushing away now. Uh, the question is, can Purple Petrol try anything into the corner? He's staying there. Oh, and Gilzo's round. More contact with Purple Petrol into turn one, and this time Gilzo has lost out a couple of positions. Yeah, he went wide, but talk about Tokyo Drift here in Japan. He... he to put that all the way around turn one he may have gone off but he got off in style style points is what we're after yeah that's all we care about in the lb uh, and the question is now can he build him in enough to either try something into 130r or try something into the casio triangle bullet boy right on the back of orcters and he goes to what will now be the outside of the corner and he sweeps around beautiful stuff Garner man not letting her poorly boy get away. They're back at the hairpin, and this is where it was last time, but suddenly Garner man dropped off again. Let's see, can he mount an attack on the lead? The boy is oh, Bullet Boy's race. gone into the back of Orcters! Sorry to interrupt you there, because Orcters has gone into the gravel. Bullet Boy has lost front wing. It's an absolutely disastrous, disastrous event. Yeah, what I did like to see, of course, there was that uh, Bullet Boy stopped and let Orcters come back on in front of him. That has pretty much ruined the race for him. But uh, really good sportsmanship when you make a mistake to show that you are apologetic on track. Back out at the front now, though, Garner Man is only four tenths off of Puli Boy. It'll be interesting to see if either of them now go into the pits on this lap, either protecting against an undercut or trying to convert one. A Puli Boy has they're come into. In. They've both come in. They've both come into the pits, trying to get it slowed down enough, and they both do. I think. Garner man was trying to go for the undercut there, and then Hapuli boy almost tried to play his bluff. Uh, they both end up coming in, no advantage for either, so the race will simply continue. Oh, what tyres we going? They're both on to me, it's unsafe for Lee. They are inside of each other in the pit lane. Johannes gets a five second stop go for speeding in the pit lane, and yes, it is Hapuli boy who emerges out in front, but as you say, it's very, very close, just as they, uh, just as the same way they entered. Janssen is right on the back of Purple Petrol now. Two tenths between them. It's all kicking off for what's currently fourth place. I think they're both sitting in net sixth and seventh. Yeah, these, these guys on, on, will have to pit, obviously. Of course. Janssen is on the medium tyre. Purple Petrol on the soft. So the medium tyres are probably starting to come into their own a little bit now. Oh, and Janssen oh, goes very yeah. wide. And he goes that into the gravel. Opportunity over for now for Janssen. Those aren't going to do those tyres any good. Locking up is never great for your web. But Garner Man, one tenth off the, off the net lead. Hapuli Boy running on the grass. 
Oh, we got his contact! That front wing gone! Gone around, trying to look up the inside. There wasn't the space. A pretty boy covers well, to be fair. And uh, that's going to be another stop for Garnham. And that is the, the fight for the lead over. He's got Caesar right behind him. Yeah, he was biding his time. Uh, but perhaps that was not the opportunity he was waiting for. Gutting for Garner, man. Uh, as, yeah, you would expect he will come back into the pits. Unless the damage is, is okay enough to continue. Uh, Toxic Tomato has come into the pits, actually. I thought he'd go a few more laps than that. Uh, but, yes, he's going to come into the pits. And fit Garner on. Back, yeah. um, oh, it is the medium tyres. It showed us the softs. But, yeah, it is, is the medium tyres that he'll run to to the end. Which releases Orcters into the lead. Toxic Tomato hounding Garner Man for P5. Hapuli Boy has managed to get away from this pack, uh, which he'll be pretty delighted at. Uh, and he'll be hoping that Garner Man keeps on holding up Toxic Tomato because he is gunning for the win today. Toxic Tomato, though, does that last corner very nicely indeed. And the DRS might be too much for Garner Man to resist. Garner Man protects the inside line. But is Toxic Tomato going to be able to sweep all the way around the outside? Yes, Garner Man. Concedes the position and Toxic Tomatoes into P4. Also, Purple Petrol's in P2. Uh, and Caesar now going ahead on Garner Man. Is he going to be able to get it done into 130R? Fantastic camera shot. Uh, it seems as if Caesar went just a little bit wide but kept it intact. And Caesar has now got P5. Yeah, he's, he's feeling ballsy today, Caesar. He knows there's a championship on the line. He's going to want to be our first two time champion. Of course, this is only the Sprint Championship, so it isn't a full, full spec. But we'll still give it to him. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll give him the victory. But Garner, man, clearly won't because he wants the position back. He fought it back with DRS. Uh, but Caesar just about does enough to protect. Orcs is hugging the middle of the track there. He's not letting anyone pass. Thou shall not pass. Is that Gandalf in the car? Uh, he goes to the inside. Bullet boy, we're seeing it once. Can we see it twice? No, he cannot go around the outside. But he's got the better exit out of the Casio Triangle. Past that awkward pit wall. And uh, going towards turn one, but I think he's a bit too far back to make a move. And Caesar is now in the pits. He'll put on the medium tyres. Yes, he's onto the mediums. Oh, and Bullet Boy will go for it. But it is Orcters who's able to defend around the outside. So difficult to go side by side there. No, uh, no. Oh, Bullet Boy is still in front. This is crazy battling, and Bullet Boy has to take to the grass, and that will end it for the moment. But there's still only a couple of attempts between them, and Orcters runs a little wide, perhaps prompting Bullet Boy to get a better exit out of the corner. He's right on the gearbox. Please wait to the deckers, thank God. You were both bringing the gravel if something had been done there. But maybe a move into the hairpin. It's one of the unlikely places to make a move, but it does come off well if you can do it. Yellow flags again into sector one. Oh, Gilzo is round. He's stopped in the gravel. This has been a really tough day for Gilzo. Oh, Bullet Boy, he's got a better exit. A completely different line he took into the corner compared to Orcters. So he's still on the gearbox. Is he going to be able to get past? Bear in mind now that Caesar is in the position behind and on fresh tyres, he might fancy catching up to these guys. Bullet Boy still behind Orcters. Will he now get his chance going down to 130R? He got the better run out of Spoon Curve. He's turned down the ERS though, so maybe he's not fancying it right yet. Yeah, will he Fly try it there. later Bullet on? Bullet Boy does get the better line. He's going to go from the outside, move again. Yes, can he swim around the outside? No, he's locked up. He's spinning the car. Actually, I think Orcters helped him back onto the track there. And Orcters carries on in the position. <laughs> and the battling continues. So, yeah, P4 is proving to be a highly prized commodity at the moment. And Caesar is already starting to reel them in. Of course, Caesar is two stopping this race after the early incident that he had, proving he still has pace, though. Uh, he's managed to come out in P6. He's got open road in front of him. And on fresh tyres, who knows how far he'll need to get up. And, and Bullet Boy just needs to finish ahead of Caesar. Keep this going just a bit longer. Yeah, I mean, an interesting claim. Toxic Tomato in our driver's chat that we have. Uh, as Gilzo Pitts uh, said that this is his worst race and we expect to see him last but currently he is 1.8 seconds off of the lead on the same strategy so he doesn't have to pit again he can win this race yes uh, he's not last at the moment we can tell you that for a fact um, and yeah there's every chance he could win this race so Pooley Boy's doing a good job of managing the gap at the moment uh, but we know the pace that Toxic Tomato has he's of the 10 races we've had so far this year, it's only him and Psycho Sane who have won outside of Bullet Boy and Caesar. So Toxic Tomato, since debuting just a few weeks ago, 
has already proven to be one of our top performers. And Hapuli Boy, who has been so close to his first race win on a number of occasions. He's got seven podiums, he's got four poles, but no wins to his name. With 11 laps to go, can this finally be the race where that changes? I reckon you might jinx it, Ben, so be careful. Alters runs wide into the first corner of the Casio Triangle. Bullet Boy gets a much better exit. He's almost alongside him. He's got to come off the throttle as they come across the line. DRS is open. ERS turned up. Could this be finally moved up? They are drag racing down to turn one. They are nose to tail. They could be contacting. No. Bullet Boy breaks the latest of them all and takes P4 finally. I want to uh, I want to commend to Puri Boy because there was once upon a time in this league where he would be the man with the most penalties in the race. You can almost guarantee he'd be in the top two or three, and he's been brilliantly clean so far this race. Let's hope he doesn't ruin it for himself and pick up a penalty because it all comes into play. But uh, Gilzo, in all that melee, did set the fastest lap of the race. So currently he's on to two points. Yeah, Gilzo inside the top 10 and uh, Johannes has got a five second stop go penalty for exceeding the track limits. I wonder if that happened at the same corner we saw that fate with Psycho Sane and J Ghosts last season. It's a weird one. It gives you a five second penalty even though you just go off. Uh, it's the Casio Triangle. It's that, it's that corner there, maybe uh, 15 perhaps? 15 yeah, or 16? Yeah, it's, but... it's just gone through the first corner so I, I think that did happen in the final corner. I wonder if he's cut straight across what that means you lock the brakes up and kind of gone across the the green tarmac which where the casio logo once was um so that that's a very harsh penalty though for a simple off track issue oh i have just seen footage of the monumental accident that happened on, on to, to the final turn between lopez mena and uh, dj marshall um Mena, no lopez was fighting i believe with Garner Man, I think, uh, got squeezed into the wall and rebounded across the track and collected both of them. Yeah, it, it was such a crazy incident. It was just names flying about all over on the uh, on the tower on the left-hand side and trying to, to grasp what had happened. Uh, we do finally have a battle out on circuit and it's over P9. Janssen just about ahead of Gilzo, but Gilzo on some fresh-ish soft tyres. Uh, he might fancy getting the position away from him. Caesar about to breach the one second gap. Has he got a better exit? He has. Seven tenths now. He's got DRS on the Mercedes driver. Can he get anything going to turn one? I mean, we've seen dive bombs in our time, but this would have to be monumentally big. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! He nearly collides with the back of Alters' car. Uh, that could have been race over for Caesar. Yeah, he's got to be so careful. He's not in the best spot in this race, but he's in a better spot than if he's picking up zero points. So he needs to keep the car intact and make sure that no incidents happen. Gilzo, he'll be hoping no incident happens as he's now right on the back of Jansen. And it's a question of whether he's going to go to the inside of 130R. He's got the momentum that he's not far off being able to do that. Brace yourself, Gilzo! In the wall! I mean, I don't want to say it, but he kind of binned it. I felt like that was a very ambitious move up the inside of a car 130R as a dive. Um, you've got to be certain it's going to work. I just didn't see that one coming off. On the other hand, Caesar, Bullet Boy picked up a time penalty, by the way. So that currently puts him behind Caesar now. Um, Caesar has got four tenth gap to alters, and there's now yellow flags in sector three. Is that for Gilzo again? Uh, not too sure. Gilzo has come into the pits and he's picked oh, up a penalty. Bless him. He, he had a great return to the race, uh, to the seat to the season last time out in Britain getting a podium on his return but it has not worked out two races in a row Caesar still on the back of Alters but still biding his time and he's tried to get a better exit out of the Casio Triangle and he's got such a good exit out of there that he's almost fallen into the back of him uh, and now he'll use the DRS to good effect as he goes to the outside he'll be hoping that he's past he's, yeah he's already passed as they go into turn one you might feature in the battle, but you might not the right way. Do 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 do. Garner Man in P3. <laughs> it's impossible contention for P2 here. Actually, it's 3.8 between them. But of course, we know Toxic Tomato has a penalty uh, where uh, Garner Man doesn't. Gilzo into the 129s. Fastest lap for him. I bet Hapuli Boy is buzzing with excitement in his little bottom in that Williams car at the moment. <laughs> he's he's actually going faster. He's set a personal best sector one on those medium tyres. He is not letting anything go. He's not leaving anything to chance. 
He is trying to drive that car as well as possible to his first ever league victory. He's got a lap and a half to go. Yeah, uh, he did concede the lead, obviously, when he came into the pits and those on soft tyres didn't. But uh, let's, for argument's sake, he has, he has effectively led the race the whole time. He, he's always been at least in the net lead of the race. Um, and to be honest, apart from when Garnerman got close to him at the hairpin, it's been a fairly comfortable ride. He's got Rex Sona on his car. He'll probably need the sure for men after this race. He must be a sweaty boy as he goes through the hairpin. And there are yellow flags. Set to... Oh, Gilzo's off again. Oh, Gilzo. Gilzo. Almost into the wall. He has binned it more times than you could buy in Wilkinson's this race. Yeah, and a Wilkinson's reference has unsurprisingly made its way into yet another of our broadcasts. It's uncanny how this happens. Hapuli boy <laughs> goes around Spoon Curve for the final time. The 27th time he's tackled it in this race. As we say, it's been a relatively carefree race. He hasn't had too much to deal with other than Garner Man in the first stint. He's had to wait a long, long time for this. He's been competitive in the league since he's joined. Seven podiums to his name. Four poles to his name, but finally, Herpuli Boy does it! Wow, I am, I am so proud for the guy. He's finally got it. He's got his wing in Japan, of all places. are such a tough but historic place. Toxic Tomato crosses the line a second. And the final... Oh, oh Donovan Donovan goes gets into in. second. A, a Bullet Boy gets it at the final second time. goes there for the unserved. But where is Caesar going across the line? He stays just behind. The Alters will also follow through. He also stays in sixth. There you go, no movement apart from second to third there. One tenth separated Garnerman and Toxic Tomato. That is, that's tough to take for the Ferrari driver, but what an astounding race. One of the most astounding things, of course, is Purple Petrol is going to come across the line in seventh place. And I believe that would be his best finish of the season. Um, he's on eight points at the moment. He'll almost double that to go to 14. Uh, great effort from Purple Petrol today. He was P2 at one point, so um, an impressive display. Uh, he's going to cross it. It's just him and Johannes actually left now. And uh, Johannes is about eight seconds behind Purple Petrol. And as, as far as I'm aware, Purple Petrol has no penalties. So uh, I don't think so. And I, I believe that Gilzo will also pick up that fastest lap point as he is in 10th place. So he doubles his points tally to two. Uh, Johannes parks it nicely and does a couple of cheeky donuts in the Pink Panther to commemorate the penultimate race. It's been a fun one for all of us here. But Johannes, I think it's time for you to cross the line so we can... Uh, Get on our way to the podium. Come on, Johannes. There we go. Spins across the line. And yes, we will indeed head to the podium. And there you have it. For the first time here at the Japanese Grand Prix, it is Hepuli Boy who is on that top step. And he is holding that trophy aloft as if it weighs absolutely nothing, of course. Uh, and Garner Man in P2. Rounding out the podium is Toxic Tomato in P3. Interesting podium to be honest. Um, none of the top guys were, were on form today and Tapuli Boy was able to take advantage of that. A clinical performance. There's official confirmation of the result. Hapuli Boy, after getting pole position, claims his maiden win in the late-breaking online racing league with Garnerman beating Toxic Tomato by just a tenth thanks to the penalty that Toxic Tomato got. Bullet Boy then finishes P4, one position ahead of Caesar. It means that the championship will go down to the wire at Brazil next race, and it will be 14 points the advantage that Caesar holds. Orcters then finishes in P6. Purple Petrol, pretty sure that is his best performance of the season in P7. Johannes finishes P8. Janssen in P9 will pick up two points, his first points of the year. And then Gilzo will get two points thanks to his fastest lap. DJ Marshall suffered connection issues, so he was 11th, with Mena and Lopez as the DNFs. That's going to do it from the Japanese Grand Prix. Join us next week for the finale. We are at Interlagos in Brazil. Until then, I've been Ben Hocking. And I've been Samuel Sage. And remember, keep breaking late.